Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Montina Malabreca and myself, Doris, for the monthly podcast. Um, we've been away for a while. We were celebrating the 175th anniversary of Holy Cross, and um, now we're back. We are back talking about a very hot topic that is in the news every single day. And that topic that we're going to discuss is Israel and Palestine. Israel and Palestine. Yes. Shall I start? Yes, you go ahead. <laughs> okay. Now, there's a long history to all this. And we Christians are involved. Uh, the, the country of Israel was destroyed by the Roman Empire. And in 132 AD, all Jewish peoples were dispersed and were not allowed to live in the, in the land of Israel, which the Bible, the Bible says God promised to the Jewish people. Jewish people lived in North Africa, in Italy, in Spain, eventually in Germany, in Poland, in Russia. And unlike other people, they maintained their identity very clearly. They never assimilated. They always stayed separate from the people they were living with. Uh, of course, if you know Jewish people, they are very industrious, very intelligent. They played a very important part in the economy of any country they lived in. I have a great love for Jewish people. I grew up in the Jewish neighborhood and was always impressed. I had a number of Jewish friends as a child on my block. I grew up in Borough Park, which is still a strong Hasidic neighborhood. So. Uh, I interacted a great deal as a child. The foundation of the modern state of Israel, so in 1948, the modern state of Israel was formed by the United Nations, carved out of the lands that were left over from the Turkish Empire that was defeated in 1916. Between 1916 and 1948, there were hardly any countries clearly defined in the Middle East because they had all been left over from the Turkish Ottoman Empire, which did not govern those lands well or correctly. Everybody was oppressed. But after the terrible, terrible pain of six million Jewish brothers and sisters being killed in the Holocaust of World War II, the United Nations formed the country of Israel uh, as a return to the land that was originally there and is a safe place where any Jewish person in the world could go. And it is part of the Jewish state of Israel, and any Jew can come and become a citizen of Israel. And over the years, millions and millions of Jews from all sorts of places have returned to the land that God gave them originally. So the question is, how did they lose it in the first place? What, what events led to them leaving Israel? Right. In the, in the, in the, in the, during the Roman Empire? During the Roman Empire yeah. or events that led up to them being occupied by the Roman Empire, right? Oh, well, you know, Israel, if you look <laughs> at a map, yeah. it is at the crossroads of everything. Yeah. Uh, it is the crossroads between Asia, so Iraq, which was Babylon, and Iran, which was Persia, and all the Afghanistan, and all the East... In order to get to Europe or to Africa, it would pass through Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's at the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Asia. It's a little tiny country that was occupied over and over and over again by the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. And then eventually in modern times, the, the Turkish Ottoman Empire. So Israel has always been subject to attack and occupation, as most of you know. Mm -hmm. During the time of Jesus' life, it was part of the Roman Empire, and they had to pay taxes, and Roman soldiers were every place. But during most of those empires, uh, it had an identity as a, as a nation. And the Jewish people understood themselves as God's people, and God had given them the land of Israel. But they constantly rebelled against the Roman oppressors, so eventually they were exiled permanently from their land by the Roman Empire in 132, and they could never go back. Yeah. For those of us that are not biblical scholars, Monsignor is, 
Israel is part of the land of Judea, right? No, Israel Israel is the name of the, the whole country of the Jewish people. The north is called Galilee, the middle is called Samaria, and the south is called Judea. Okay. So the, the south of Israel is called Judea in the Bible. Okay. And uh, in in the south, there were two, they, Israel has 12 tribes. You know, the whole area is very tribal, not just the Jews, mm -hmm. but the Arabs and, the, and all the people who live there have lots of tribes. Uh, so Israel had 12 tribes. Two tribes lived in Judea, which is Benjamin and the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And the other 10 lived either in the north or even across the Jordan River in what is now Jordan. And all of that is Israel? Uh, all of that was ancient Israel. It isn't modern Israel. Modern Israel is smaller because of what, the way the United Nations uh, do, divided the line. So the, the picture I'm trying to paint is... The areas that were occupied and the area that was, um, you mentioned that the Roman Empire occupied it. And after the last revolt, the last Rome, Jewish and Roman revolt that happened, the Romans erased the name Israel. Yes, they changed the name to Palestine, and which comes from the Philistines. In other words, Palestine comes from the Philistines who... Strange enough, lived where the Gaza Strip is right now. Right, so right. There, there was no such there was no such people called the Palestinians. They just looked for a name to, because they didn't want the name of Israel to exist anymore. Hence, I did not know this, <laughs> and um, to 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 have a, 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 a an oppressor to erase you know the name of your country. country um is traumatizing one mm -hmm. and two um they israel was still able to maintain their identity um, the, the, not israel but the jewish people the jewish people were able to mm -hmm. maintain their identity and some of us don't know that this is what the roman empire did you mm -hmm. know like to erase it out of try to erase them out and of they history were sent, and, they, and they were sent many of them went to northern europe eventually you know so when you hear about the Jews in Germany, mm -hmm. the Jews in Poland, right. or the Jews in Russia, they were part of the whole dispersion of the Jewish world after the, uh, the exile of the Roman Empire. The, so the Romans made that possible. They had to flee. They, had to, they could not live in Israel. They could not live in Israel. So um, friends and family, this is one of the reasons why we see this war happening today, because... Um, Montigny and I have been discussing since then since the uh, Jews had left their homeland there's been a yearning to come back home right? Oh, 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 always in fact I don't know if you know this but uh, in every Seder supper you know what the Seder Passover supper yeah. in every Seder supper there's a toast with the wine and they say next year in Jerusalem oh. and you're always a longing to go home mm -hmm. because it's the land that God promised so anyway, in 1948, the modern state of Israel was formed by the United Nations, and there were mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of Arabs living in that land at that point. There were also many Jews living, but by 1948, there were many Jews, but there were hundreds of thousands. The Jewish people said to most of them, uh, stay. Okay. But uh, there was a great fear. Uh, and 700,000 Arab, Palestinian Arabs left the new country of Israel. Okay. Believing, I believe, they believing that, the, of course, you, you, I know you know this, but the surrounding Arab countries, so the surrounding Arab countries, meaning Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, all the Arab-speaking countries were opposed to the formation of the state of Israel. Right. Because and began a war in, 19, in, in the early 1950s to overcome this new country, Israel, and not allow it to exist. And the law was lost. They, 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 it could not overcome. Of course, Israel was highly supported by Europe and by the United States as a, as a resolution of the problem. Uh, so they were protected. But Israel, of course, did most of the fighting. But in 1950 to 54, mostly... Uh, all of those Arab countries were repulsed and they could not overcome the government of Israel. So, th so this is um, 
something that is generational. Oh, it's generation because it's, it's even pre the existence of the state of Israel, but it's been going on. So even, you know, all those, those 700,000 Palestinians that fled Israel went into, into refugee camps okay. and they're still there. They're still there, 70, 80 years later. Those refugee camps still exist. Uh, not all of them, but many of them, their children or their grandchildren, are still living in refugee camps in, in, uh, in, in either in the, no, the non-Israeli parts of Palestine or even other, other parts of the Arab world. And of course, not so, still many of those Arab countries, it, it, the, the, the tone has changed. Mm -hmm. um, Lebanon's government has pretty much un reluctantly accepted the existence of Israel. Saudi Arabia has, Egypt has, right. uh, but not Syria and Iraq and Iran. So um, there's a change of position on some of the Arab countries, not that all, and there are many groups that are completely hostile to the reality of Israel, including the famous party that runs Gaza, which is called Hamas. Okay. So, you know, the Palestinians, there are Palestinians living in Israel, there are Palestinians living in other parts of Israel that have been occupied by Israel. It's also complicated. It's so very, complicated. Very strangely, when the United Nations formed the country of Israel, mm -hmm. they left out parts of ancient Israel that were very important. And what parts are those? So those parts are, number one, what's called the West Bank. The West Bank is the West Bank of the River Jordan. It includes Samaria. It includes uh, Bethany. It includes Jericho. Oh. Uh, includes Bethlehem. We know those places. And all those places which were in ancient Israel yeah. are in the West Bank. Also, it includes Gaza. Gaza, Gaza was always a part of the very south East southwest corner of Israel. It's a little strip as big as California. Okay. Not even, no, not as big as California, sorry. As big as the city of Philadelphia, that's what they oh, say. Okay. It was the ancient home of the, Phil the Philistines. Uh, so that was not in, in modern Israel. Uh, also, all the south, so the, the Sinai Desert, no, it was not in modern Israel. Uh, and strangely enough, Mm -hmm. The old city of Jerusalem was not in Israel. How could they not? How could it not, not be included? included? How could you? How could you give Israel back to Israel to the Jews Without and not give them Jerusalem, which is now called East Jerusalem, but it includes what's known as the old city of Jerusalem, where the temple was. Yes. Uh, but the problem is, is where the temple was. Where the temple was. Before you go any further. There were two temples. There were one temple built by Solomon. It was destroyed by the Babylonians. And a second temple built uh, by Ezra and, yes. and Nehemiah. Uh, and when Jesus was there, that was the second temple that was there. That was destroyed. Yeah. And in 70 AD. And on top of that mountain where the, where the temple was, Muhammad visited and said that Mm -hmm. He went to heaven and saw heaven on his horse and came back. So built on top of that mount mm -hmm. where the temple used to exist are now two gigantic mosques. Oh. One of them over the place where Abraham uh, was going to sacrifice Isaac. And the other one is a huge mosque which is very, very populated. Every Friday it's packed with thousands of Muslims worshiping. So I think the real reason for not giving the old city of Jerusalem was was not to antagonize Muslim people who also hold mm -hmm. so you really really the temple where the temple mount yeah. was the temple of, the, of of Jerusalem it's the temple where Jesus was presented and where Jesus taught and it is the place where Muhammad went to heaven so that one little spot yes that one little spot is sacred to three big religions which is in in a in a biblical way is phenomenal, but as you and I live every day, we turn on the TV. There's this constant fighting and it's killing, going and on for hundreds of yeah, years. and children are born into it, not knowing why are we fighting this and why is it so important. And it's because 
we have three nations that believe that this is their right. They yeah, belong this is their home. Place, right? Yeah. So Drew, uh, the, so I don't know if you know. In 1967, with all these Arab countries trying to invade Israel, mm -hmm. there was a six-day war. Israel began the war. It lasted only six days, and they conquered the northeastern corner of Israel, the Golan Heights, which belonged to Syria, mm -hmm. the whole West Bank, okay. uh, the city of Jerusalem, uh, Gaza, and the Sinai Peninsula. It was all occupied by Israel in 1967. In 2005, they gave back Gaza, and they gave back the Sinai Peninsula. They gave, it, they gave, they gave um, the Sinai back to Egypt, and Gaza is connected to Egypt. Uh, but but it's self-ruled. But they've maintained the other places, claiming that first of all it's part of ancient Israel, right? And second of all, uh, they need it for their own. They can't give back the Golan Heights because the Syrians can attack them from the heights if they don't give it back. Okay. Uh, you know the story of the Western Wall. So the Western Wall is the wall that that held up the first temple, not just the second temple, but the first temple. And uh, so if you go into the ancient city today. The mosques are on top of the mount, mm -hmm. but on the bottom of the mount is the wall, and that's part of the Jewish quarter, and there are thousands of Jewish people praying and lamenting. They yes. call it the wall, the wailing wall. Yes, the wailing that wall. That people can put their petitions Prayers. in. Mm -hmm. and they were not able to go into that place until 1967 when they conquered Jerusalem. Wow. So uh, it's very sympathetic. The Jewish cause is very sympathetic. But of course, Palestinians mm -hmm. are very sympathetic too. Mm -hmm. uh, and both sides, both the Jewish side and the Arab side, right. uh, have radicalized people who are extremists. But they also have people who just live there and want to live in peaceful coalition. Correct. So the, the, the war that Israel has begun now mm -hmm. is not a war against all Arab people. It's a war against the Hamas government of Gaza, which, first of all, did an enormous attack uh, outside of its own borders and killed 1,200 people on October 7th. Uh, and there is also, they are in charge and run mm -hmm. uh, the whole millions of people living in Gaza. So it is unknown mm -hmm. how many how many Gazans are radicalized and how many are peaceful yeah. coexistent. Mm -hmm. But certainly the Hamas government uh, has never recognized Israel, does not believe that Israel exists, should exist, and made this enormous attack. What we presume that some of their leaders have said is because everything was getting too comfortable and nobody's forgotten the real cause, which is to end the Jewish state. Um, that's a big statement. That's a big statement. That's right? a big statement, knowing that the history that's there, meaning they could trace their lineage back, you know, meaning that they've always existed, Israel. Israel yes, always. but also Arabs have lived in there for hundreds of years. That, I that mean, is the, true. The, the claim that you, you haven't been here in 1700 years and we've been living <laughs> here is true. I want to say something else. Yeah. I, I'm very sympathetic to the Jewish cause and to Israel and I, I believe in the, in the establishment of the Jewish state, but certainly the response of Israel to the to the attack is enormous, mm -hmm. and uh, they are claiming eleven thousand deaths, four thousand of which are children, oh my gosh. Uh, being propelled by the government of Netanyahu. Uh, so, just the reality of the attack of October 7th is great and the reality that Hamas must be put down is mm -hmm. true uh, but the constant killing of people in order to accomplish that goal cannot be right so uh, it's a tragedy. It is definitely a the tragedy. The Pope and uh, a number of European nations have called for a ceasefire mm -hmm. uh, because while everybody is fighting, there's not gonna be, nothing's going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that just yesterday, uh, Israel entered into the heart of Gaza City and took over the hospital, which was claimed, they claim was the center of headquarters of Hamas, 
it's still not clear if that's true or not. Uh, but hopefully the, the, the killing is going to stop because it's, it's enormous and many, yeah. many innocent people are being killed and it's just absolutely terrible. It's absolutely terrible that centuries, you know, has gone by and there's still no solution um, to this. And I, I ask that everyone keeps um, Israel in their prayers because it doesn't sit well with anyone to see children dying, you know, mm -hmm. innocently. Um, but I hope that they can come to come to some solution. But let's put something at rest because some people think this war is, you know, um, is the war that's telling us the the end of the world is coming. You know, um, it's 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 biblical. It's not. It's it's something that. There are biblical undertones, of course, mm -hmm. but this war has been going on since 1948 mm -hmm. in different forms. Uh, and, you know, we are a world that knows about war, and war is terrible. Mm -hmm. We, The United States is a country that lived through many wars, especially two world wars, but also, you know, Korea and Vietnam right. and Afghanistan and Iraq. And there are morality about war there's a lot written about morality and there's lots of geneva conventions about what you can do and what you can't do and killing of innocent civilians is is a war crime uh, killing of innocents is a war crime and uh, yes hamas needs to be stopped but all these killing of innocent civilians cannot be allowed it just cannot be allowed and everybody's hot everybody's angry Everybody wants vengeance. Besides justice, they want vengeance. Mm -hmm. um, there's got to be peace in order to have a clear solution. So how do we, those that are not in the middle of all of this, keep of good hope, you know? Um, because you can find yourself drawn into it, become depressed, and and see this, that there's there's no end to this. How do we keep Well, uh, I, I believe, you know, there have been a number of wars since 1948. Mm -hmm. And they've all ended. They haven't ended with a resolution, mm -hmm. but they've ended. So I think this war is going to end soon. Okay. Soon. Uh, but the tensions are going to remain. Uh, there is constant desire to bring people to the table to talk about resolution. Mm -hmm. And clearly Hamas cannot be at the table. And it is Israel's goal that Hamas be destroyed. But of course, the more you hurt people, the more people get angry at you. Uh, so who will run Gaza in the future? Israel says they're not going to let the Palestinian Authority, you know, because that's the other government. The other government of the Palestinians mm -hmm. is is a more peaceful group called the Palestinian Authority. They have uh, semi-control over the West Bank and over okay. there are areas, you know, like Jericho and Bethlehem all belong to an area that's controlled by the Palestinian Authority. And there is some dialogue between Israel and them. But Israel said they wouldn't even allow them to come in because they allowed this to happen. Uh, although I'm not sure they had much of a choice. Right. So we're going to have to see what's going to happen to Gaza. In Gaza... Gaza, because of all the violence and because of Hamas, Israel has kept Gaza very closed. And it's very hard to get out of Gaza into Israel. Okay. Uh, there's only four or five, I think there's four entry points, three in Israel and one in Egypt. And then there's the sea, the sea is blockaded. That's been going on uh, since 2005. Uh, there's blockading and there's controlling and it's made a pot that's boiled over, boiled over. Exactly. So some, some, some solution to the Gaza problem needs to be found, and uh, Israel is not the only one who has a say in it. Uh, the, the other countries of the world, including our own, mm -hmm. has to be involved in how to solve the crisis of, of, the, of the Gaza, because Gaza has been reduced to poverty. because. Yeah, of, you know, constantly bombing. You know, even before the bombing, even before the, this whole thing, you know, the, the, because so few people were allowed out to work in Israel, people have been unable to, to maintain themselves a, a decent way in, yeah. in Gaza. And many of the young men 
have been radicalized by the, by the Hamas government. So someone has to, something has to be done to resolve the fate of Gaza mm -hmm. after Israel finishes occupying it, which we presume they will do. They're not stopping when they win. I think they will, they will accomplish that goal. Well, they're after all the leaders of Hamas. Whether they're going to find them or not, I don't know, because they seem to be very wily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> but they're know. persistent. But they're certainly persistent. But the, the hope is that this, the killing of children and innocent the civilians mm -hmm. is going to stop. I, I would like to, I don't know, of course, I, I understand that many people here have different reactions, mm -hmm. uh, especially because this touches what's been called anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Uh, whether you have a, your experience of Jewish people in this country has made you resent Jewish people, and whether your experiences of Muslim people in this country have made you fearful or angry at Muslim people. Uh, it's a very complicated issue because it's not the exact issue that's going on in Israel, but it's what it's in our hearts because we have our own experience. I would encourage you to examine yourself to see if you're anti-Semitic uh, and ask God to give you a love for the people that gave us the Savior. Right. And also ask God to give you an appreciation of the, uh, of the Muslim people in the world. Uh, Muslim is not a universal violent religion. That's just not true. Many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of Muslim people want to live in peace. Yeah. And uh, they are, in fact, a very delightful people, cordial people, uh, a welcoming people. They are. Uh, I, of course, wish that all Jews and all Muslims knew Jesus as their savior, but I certainly respect both their culture and their religion. Uh, we all three share the belief that there is one God. Uh, let us examine ourselves that we do not respond out of anti-Semitism mm -hmm. or Islamophobia, but consider all people, Christians, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, yes. as brothers and sisters. Amen. Just one point, I guess, uh, you know, I, I often take groups to Israel. I take groups to Christian Israel because it's the site of where Jesus walked mm -hmm. and where he died and where he rose and where he was born. And by going to Israel, you meet many of these people. Okay. Uh, the encounter is usually very good. It's usually very good. You see them in their homes. Uh, yes, the Arab people do have a resentment against the Jewish people, mostly because of the way they're treated, and also because of the great prosperity that the Jewish people have in Israel. And yes, the Jewish people often have a resentment against the Arab, mostly because of the condemnation and the opposition that they get. Mm -hmm. May God heal all of us of our resentments and our fears and our suspicions. Mm -hmm. And may we all be honest, peace-loving people. Mm -hmm.